Okay, we're doing another update video. So again, this one's not gonna have an introduction. We're just putting the camera out, doing it live, and we'll see what happens. So I just did that video about the FCC looking to auction off that huge portion of the 900 megahertz band spectrum a little while ago, and I'm still tracking that. There hasn't been any progress yet, but I'm certainly following it. And as soon as there is, I'll definitely provide an update. But kind of in the same you know realm, I wanted to address this FCC clarification, not a new ruling at all, just simply a clarification regarding the, you know, surrounding the linking of GMRS repeaters. So this definitely seems like it's been a hot topic of discussion. And I want to first say I really like the idea behind GMRS and kind of the idea of what it was intended to be. I think the incorporations of licensing into it, albeit a very simple one, is good. Just in the fact that it will, you know, kind of help keep the band a little cleaner. That makes sense. Um... I love the fact that it's, you know, rooted in UHF and it, you know, I like how the FCC spelled out the fact that it is supposed to be this, you know, short distance two-way voice. And then in 2017, they added, you know, short data and GPS messaging capabilities, you know, communications system via HTs, mobile radios, and the ability to use, you know, incorporate repeaters into the system. I think it is just extremely valuable. So... Somewhat, recent, uh, the, somewhat recently, I'm sure you're aware, the FCC clarified a rule that had been in place, but I just wanted to make sure that it was, you know, clear on what they ruled and that basically that the linking of any GMRS repeaters to achieve this, you know, wide area type coverage network is not in the public interest. And that was the wording they used was not in the public interest, which makes sense because at first you're kind of like, well, wait, no, the public's trying to get to choose what they want to do. But they went on to further justify their ruling on that, you know, saying that by, you know, the, being that the GMRS spectrum is very limited and, you know, used on these shared commons, a commons basis, um, that the system was designed and really only works well as a service if it's on a localized basis so that users can share the channels and still be able to hear the people that they want to talk to without just overwhelming amount of interference from, you know, what these linked repeaters would end up being. And this right here is kind of what I wanted to zero in on. Repeater communication systems are great. And like I said in the beginning, I am a fan on, you know, kind of the purpose behind what GMRS has adapted to. That, you know, being comms for a ton of outdoor enthusiasts looking for comms during hiking or especially those guys, you know, and girls in the overlanding community. And really just anyone who is venturing out into areas that need good comms and, you know, maybe they don't even have cell coverage but they know they're you know they're going to run into that issue and they either you know need those reliable communications between the two or even if they would have cell coverage it's just easier that if you have to communicate across a you know in a group of people that everyone can hear at the same time having a reliable communication system to do that so again gmrs it's kind of you know perfect for that it's not about making you know random contacts with people and this is where the ham purist hobbyist really lose me so you know look talking about radio stuff with strangers can definitely prove to be very useful and there are a lot of really smart people out there you know and some of the information that they will share and the technical capabilities that they have are freaking amazing and there are some things with ham radio like summits on the air or parks on the air that i do kind of like uh but not for just the purpose of making contacts more for the fact of it's an excuse to get out there and train with your gear but it's training that is surrounded by you know somewhat of an objective structure so I do have my general ham radio license but again I don't really embrace the hobby for what the you know purest of the hobby is and actually think it's a little pointless and somewhat frustrating to just want to go out and talk with random people when there's no objective reasoning for it in place. Um, but kind of the caveat to it is getting that ham radio license gets you some privileges. And again, depending on, you know, if you have those privileges, to be able to get on those bands to have a lot more capability. So, you know, as far as the talking around to people, GMRS is not about that life. Um, and if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm again, a big fan of that. As far as the linking of the repeaters goes, the reason I went into some explanation as to what GMRS was and kind of intended for, who the primary users of it are, and then touched on what HAM was, was just to kind of help justify my stance on it in that I 
do not think that they should be linked together. Um, you know, I think a solid, well-positioned standalone repeater can provide an incredible amount of coverage. What I think could be a really cool project in kind of a, a legal way of maybe increasing your capabilities and kind of getting some of the things like some kind of a, a cool middle ground would be, you know, to, uh, you know, if you're interested in, you know, hearing the thoughts on this would be to let me know in the comments before I get into this, if I get into it, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on about this. So my, my, my thought would be, it'd be a really cool project um, that if the GMRS community as a whole, as, as whole as the community could possibly be, if they began to map out the repeater locations and coverage areas, not through simulated, you know, estimated propagation maps, but through actual field test, and then the channel that that particular repeater was on, and then through standalone repeaters and cycling through the channels so that you would know which channel to switch through as you traverse through coverage areas. You, you know, you could then have an organized way to in a way just through planning an organization kind of artificially extend the range of those repeaters. And then, you know, if you were spread out over two repeater coverage areas, you could always have a dual VFO radio that could monitor both. And if you need it, you could even have someone, you know, in the middle that could, you know, in the middle of, three repeater areas, you know, relay the message messages back and forth. Again, depending on the needs of your group, if it was that large or you were that spread out. So, you know, yeah, people have been asking my thoughts on this topic. So I figured I would just quickly address it. And then while I was thinking about it, this report, you know, repeater organization idea came into mind. So I figured I would throw it out there. Get your thoughts again, leave them in the comments below. I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys have to say about that. And with that, as always, be safe.